This is code.org, and this is my super duper awesome app. What I'm utilizing here on my Netflix info app with an explanation point, start is filtering. I'm filtering by year, which means you could filter or use this method to filter any type of list by numbers. So if you want to search for a year, see all these movies? They came out in the year I just entered. There's no dead screens either because you want to get an awesome grade. There's three screens, comments, variables, and it walks you through how to build out your own app. Build something really awesome and definitely make it your own. So I use Netflix in years, but you could use this method to search for or filter any number, Oscars, uh, Rolling Stones, the height of volcanoes. This would work in all of those situations and allow you to iterate or transverse through lists and output that data to a screen while implementing and using functions and function calls. If that didn't make sense, don't worry, it's about to. Let's get started. All right, let's go over the requirements for our hackathon. What we really need to have, three screens, all screens easy to navigate. That means no dead ends, guys, meaning every screen you can get to somewhere else. A data set used in a meaningful way towards the program's purpose. At least one list transversed using transverse just means move through. Don't let that freak you out. Map, producer, filter, indicate which in a comment. Programming constructs like variables, functions, conditionals, lists, loops. All functions include comments that explain their purpose, how they work. All elements have IDEs with meaningful names and no errors. Okay, let's take a look at our options. Filter is the most common. Use the list from one column to determine information that will be filtered from another column. Okay, so that would mean we could use uh, the year and the, and the Netflix movie or something and show just movies from a particular era. Map is to change each item in a list. Maybe we add a, uh, I don't know, explanation point to the end of every movie's name. And reduce could be to grab the oldest or newest. Keep those in mind. Keep our requirements in mind because we're going to take another look at these. But let's go ahead and get going on my data set. On this, I'm going to choose. Let me do Netflix. Import. Boom. Okay. Netflix. And let's take a look. This is the data. And what do I have? I have the type, title, country, release date, all of these things. Awesome. Now that I have that, let's get going on some of our design. Instead of screen one, I'm just going to say start screen. And remember, we have to have three of these, three screens. Start screen. Um, my start screen is just going to be a welcome to my app. Let me throw an image here. I'm going to use their icons just for ease. Choose. And of course, you could always link or upload an image later, which I might do, but for now. Uh, I'll say start image, and then I'm going to use a label. And again, you want to have good IDs for these. Uh, title label Netflix info app explanation point, of course. And let me see here. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, and then 55. How bad does that look? That looks real bad. That's what you said, right? 45. And we'll center it. Okay, and then I'm going to use one of their default themes because I am the least creative of humans. Let's see if I can... You know, actually, I like citrus. I'm going to go with citrus. All right, now button. I'm just going to say, you know, uh, start btn and start i want that larger perfect so that's our first screen screen one done and now i can go ahead and drag boom our second screen will be the input screen so i'll say input screen will allow the user well to input stuff so input screen let me go ahead and have a label and I'm, I'll call it uh, input title input or input info. Sure. And then let me go ahead and what do I do here? What if I do font size 36 and I'll center it and I'm going to go from one side to the other. And I will start with a filter where they can filter by year. So to do that, 
I will have a, we could do a drop down. I'll filter with by decade. Let's see if that's a good idea. Netflix hasn't been around that long. I'm old. What's their oldest show here? Oh, they're all 1918, 17. Cool. We'll filter by year with a drop down. That's doable. Okay. Boom. And I'll say year drop down. And it looked like 2017, 2018, 2019. And we can check and see if there are others, right? I could put 2020 here, for instance. I can put 2016. It just might not work. So I'll leave it like this for now. And we can check that if we want later. Boom. Okay. So, and then I'm going to have that be centered. Oh, the text is aligned centered. Okay. Well, we know it won't ever be that big. Something like this. And I'm going to say label year label, right? And year filter. Okay. So that will filter by year, obviously. And then let's have a button that says, uh, this will be our C data BTN or button. And I'm just going to write C data or how about search? It's going to search for these items, right? Search. So we'll say search button. Cool. All right. That works for me Something like that. Okay. Now let's get into some code and we'll go back. Oh, nope. I need one more screen, of course. Hmm. I might duplicate this screen for ease. So to do that, I'm going to make sure it says input screen way up here. And I want to duplicate the whole thing. Duplicate. Boom. It says screen two now, but let me make sure to get a hold of the screen. I'm going to say data screen. Great. And search. Oh, label or title maybe. And then this is just going to say search results. Cool. And I can use this label. I won't need a drop down on the search page. So let me delete that. And for this search button, I wouldn't have a search button, but I'll say um, restart button. Restart. It could also say new search. Okay, filter by year. And then I want an area to display the results. So that will just be a text area. It's not an input area because they're not gonna write it. We're gonna show them the results. So I'll call this result text area and the entry text or the default, but we're not going to need a value. I'll resize that a bit. And let's see how big the font is Just for font testing. Yeah, that should be good. Okay. And then I might do a little image just to make this look good. Let me put, I won't need this because I have search results. So now let me do a, oh, what else do they have? Movie. Ooh, a movie ticket is. It doesn't need to be. Boom. And maybe I'll duplicate this. And I'll just say ticket IMG1. And I'm going to click on this guy because you got to have meaningful labels. Ticket IMG2. Great. All right. So I think we have our basic app with the filter ready to rock. So let me dive into code. All right. First, we want to grab the list. We want to grab some of our data into a list. So to do that, I need to declare a list. Full data. All right. So this is what's going to actually grab it. If I do this, though, it is not going to like us because we need a variable. So variable, boom. And we're making a list. What data do I want? Well, I'm definitely going to want the names and the years of these films. So I'll say titles, right? And then what will that be? But I also want one more variable, and I said, uh, ooh, except I think it's a date. Oh, no, they have release year, too. That's nice of them. Oh, so we are going to need, ah, I see. We see these release years. Okay, we can take care of that. Um, let's go ahead, though, and do uh, release year. Great. 
now data and whoop, and whoop. okay now what column do i want if i hit choose and you don't have anything here you want to go find your own data now so we're going to need to get the name keep in mind what we're doing would work for any year or any number make sure to be creating your own project you don't need to use netflix but let's go ahead and get the name title there we are and great so let's go ahead now we have two variables we're going to also need let me oh, let me go to the input screen we're going to need a variable when they enter their year to be able to save that so i'm going to say um i don't know input year right what they put in as their year I will set this equal to initially, maybe just 2018, because I know that date, that year will work. All right. And then I'm going to have this all stored in a big, long string, right? So we can use that data elsewhere. So let me go ahead and drag this out and say um, output or name title out titles output or titles list or all titles and what this is going to be i'm just going to make this a string and it'll be an empty one to start so great now with all of our variables ready to rock we need to start doing some of the on event stuff so I'm going to get some spaces in here just for easiness to read. They are not required, but it's kind of nice to have. So UI on event, boom. And I'm going to need more than one of these. I already know. So I'm going to go ahead and gra oh, grab them now. Boom and boom. All right. Now, where am I going to need an on event? Well, first, the start screen, right? And they're going to go ahead and be here when it starts and they'll click the start button. So on the event that the start button is clicked. What do we want to do? Well, if they click the start button, and this is the ID, right? If I hover, you can see it. We want to go to another screen, right? We need to take them to the input screen. So let's see, set screen. If I click this down arrow thing, input screen. Cool. All right, now, once they are there, what do I need? And this is why I knew to drag out more than one on event. Input screen. Okay, well, search. I have another button. So when the search button is clicked, I'm going to want to do something. Start button is not what I wanted. Search button is clicked. Hmm. And then let's take a look here. You could also use an on event for the year filter. You don't necessarily need a button, but that's up to you to make it your own. Because for the year filter, you could do uh, the year drop down, which I have somewhere, year drop down. And then you could do something like on event change. And then it would automatically, you could have it go to the next screen. I'm not going to do that if you want to, but it is an option to make it more of your own. Restart button. And then for that, the restart button, um, I'm going to just say unclick again. And now I need a set screen. The search button is going to take them to my data screen. Set screen. The restart button is going to take them to the input screen. Okay. So that should all get work. Start screen, cool. Search screen, restart. Yay! All right. And that's no dead screens, right? They can get around our app. Now, I want to be able to, if I move this year, nothing's going to happen. I don't save it yet. We need to save that year. I know when I want to save it, because if I hit start now, if they hit search, I need to know what year they have chosen to perform an action, right? I need to know if they've picked a year. So what I'll do to, do, to make that happen is I already have my variable input year. But when they click the search button, I'm going to say, wait a minute, computer, update the year so we can use that. So I will have, uh, when they click search, I'm going to have input year is going to be equal to, let's grab the hover, year drop. Get the text of what? Boom. There we are. And then let's go ahead and, oh, let's actually do this before we change the screen. And now let's have a function for the data. So I'm now going to drag this out. And I will call this function uh, 
search list or filter list, anything like that, totally up to you. Now, where am I going to want to use this? I'm going to want to start the search right after we change the screen. Search list. Okay. Now, what do I need to do? I want to search the list and go ahead and filter it down into years, into films that match this release year. I'm actually now having second thoughts. Let's have this be an empty array or an empty list, title output. All right. To get through our list, to search through all of this data, we must use a for loop. Bum, 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 bum. Oh no, it's so scary. It is not. All right. Let's see. Show box again. Here's my function. Now I hit here and I want to take a look at all the data we have. What data do we have? I can show you right now. We have titles and release year. I'm going to copy this, put it in watch. These are super handy. If you never use these, by the way, release year, boom, release year, boom. Let me hit run. So right when it starts, look at it. It grabs all of the films. It also grabs all of the years, all of the release years of these films. So now I could do something like this. Uh, I want to show you actually indexes. So I have titles as the name of a list right now of their names. I'm going to do a uh, square bracket, which is next to the letter P, a zero and a square bracket. Let me hit enter. List start counting at zero. It sounds super weird, but they do. Notice this film's name. Let me go into my data right now. Let's see the, the film name at one. One. There it is. Okay. Let me go back to my code. Let's see the film name at index one. Here it is. Let's see. And the data. Oh, look. And that's actually, though, at two. So a list always starts counting at zero. The first item in a list, we say that is at index zero. The second item in a list is at index one. The third item is at index two. And it sounds kind of weird, but bear with me, right? It's really useful, and we just got to understand this for now. So with that in mind, I know I have these lists full of data. I need to use a for loop because I want to search for something. I'm going to drop in a for loop here. So right now I have four I is equal to zero. I is less than four I plus plus. What the heck does this do? Okay, well, when I run search list, the computer, I click search button, I click on it. The computer grabs the input year from the screen. It then saves it to this variable. It changes my screen to the data screen and it says run search list. The computer says, what's that? <laughs> Smack. And it starts running this function. First off, it says, okay, I have a for loop. I have a new variable i, and I'm going to set that equal to zero. i must always be less than four, and i plus plus just means add one to i each loop. So I want to show you kind of what this is doing. Um, let's go ahead and just do a counts log. Do they give us one of these? Yep. And I'm going to say um, num, and that's just a string, and I'm going to put an i after it. So what will happen when I hit run here, I'm going to hit start. And when does this run? When I hit the search button, search button, num, zero, one, two, three, because it starts at zero, it add one to I each time. So it says, okay, I zero, zero is less than four. This is true. And oh yeah, I'm going to need to add one to I. All right. But right now I is zero. So num zero is council logged. It hits the bottom. It goes back to the top and it says, what did I used to be? Oh yeah, it was zero. Zero plus one, because plus plus means add one. Well, that's one. Is one less than four? Yes, that's true. Since that's true, it counts the logs. Okay, num, oh yeah, i is one right now, and it puts num one. Hits the bottom, back to the top, i. Okay, well, i is one, so one, pl one plus plus is two. Is two less than four? Yep, that's true. Hits this, puts two down here, hits the bottom, goes back to the top. Okay, what's i right now? It's two. 2 plus plus or 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 is less than 4. Puts it out, hits the bottom back to the top. 3, okay, 3 plus plus or 3 plus 1 is 4. Is 4 less than 4? False. It's done running this. If I had code beneath it, it would run that now. The loop's done. So our list, though, that we want to look at is definitely longer than four things. How can we make sure it goes through the entire list? Well, they actually have a really handy thing in code, and it is the length. So I can do the, it's right here too. It says for string, it can be used for list as well. So what I'm going to do is say, okay, how many titles do I have? Because titles dot length. 
because I want to look through every single title. So go ahead and let I go all the way up to the end of the list to be able to search all of our titles. All right, that's looking good. And I want to show you what I'm saying here. So I'm going to say title, right? And now over here, I can do titles because that's the name of my list. And I can do I because I is going to be the index. If you're curious what I equals each time, I can show you even. And this is just to make sure you're understanding what's going on here. Okay, so this looks complicated. What it's going to do is tell us what number I is on and what title is at that point. And bam, there it all is, right? I might have broken it. I have no idea how big this data set is. But it's telling us title. Here's the index of 888. And here's the title. My computer's running slow because it does not like what I just did. So I'm going to go ahead and hit reset. But I think you get what's going on there. So that being said, let's go ahead and search through this list. And instead of doing titles, I mean, I can do titles. Titles is going to be the same length as our year release list, right? It's the same data set. It's just this is all the data in this column. Year release is all the data in that column. So all right, I might do year release since it's what I'm going to be looking at. Is that what I call it? Release year, of course. Cool. OK, now I want to check each release year if it is equal to the input year. So if it's equal to the year they entered, I can add that item to the list. So I need if I, if I want to check if I need a conditional. What I am showing you right now is an example of a filter. I am filtering the list by something. So if, and then what was the variable I just said we used? Input year. So I'm going to say if input year equals equals, and what does it have to equal? Well, what is are we using to store the year of each film? Release year. But release year is this huge long list. I need to make sure to put I because I need to compare each item in the release year list to whatever year they input it. If this is true, and only if this is true, I'm going to go ahead and add that title to our title output list. We could also add it to one big string. And if you want to think about that, go for it. You can also add it to a string, but I'm going to make a separate list for this example. So I'm going to use append. Oh, yeah, here's an append. So now I'm going to say append what? Append means add to list. So I said titles out output. And what am I appending? I'm going to append whatever title is at this index. Because I know whatever title is at this index, right? So if the release year, if I my I is zero, and let's go back to our data. So the release year of this first film is 1985. Okay, so that's fine. If this is true, then if my list at zero, right, index of zero, again, the first items at index zero, this is at index one, I know it's the first item, but it's at index zero. So if the year at index zero, the first year is 1985, and that's what they're searching for, what do I do? Well, year would then be equal if they entered 1985 to this, to the year at, uh, to the release year at index zero. That's true. If this is true, it drops in here and it says, okay, get the title variable I have up here and add this title to that list. And that's what it's going. That's what will occur. Now, I want to be safe because if they do search multiple times, I need to make sure that this list is wiped out and restarted each time. All right. So to do that, to make sure I start my list anew, I'm actually up here each time this runs going to say, OK, whatever title used to be equal to, just in case they're running the search again, we need to clear out the old info. So titles output is just going to be empty to equal to empty. All right, now I'm going to append all these lists and it won't do a thing, but we should have them successfully added. So let's try. I'm going to do titles output here just to see if we can view what's going on. Let me hit run and start and I'll do, I don't know, 2018 search. And look, all of these, let's go look for just love data. Just love 2018. Perfect. So it is outputting the years that is working, but it's not putting them to screen yet. 
So now I'm going to have a different function. And again, how you do this is somewhat up to you. You could have made this one big string, right? And said, uh, and concatenated it and just set the string. I made it a list. So now I'm going to have a different function that says um, output results or maybe print results, you could say. And what that will do is it's going to use a for loop as well. Fair control for for i is equal to zero. That's fine. I is going to be less than I have to be careful here. So all of my results is going to be stored in titles out. So I need to do titles output dot blank. If I don't do that, if I were to put, uh, for instance, release year here, well, not every film had the release year I was looking for. So the release year list is longer. It has every film with every year. And it's going to throw this off. I'll show you what I mean in a sec. But so I want to go through the entire titles output list. And then I'm going to want to data screen. UI controls. I'm going to debate for a second. Let's go ahead and use a string variable. I'm going to do variable uh, results is equal to empty lit, empty string. And then I'm going to say result is equal to result plus titles output i, whatever's at that index. I'm not done though, because I'm also wanting to add a boom, boom, or boom, boom, either way, a comma and a space. And if you want to get really fancy, if you don't want that space at the end, you could do that. I could also go ahead and do a, if you don't want a comma and a space, you might want to do a slash in, which is a new line character. So each film is on a new line. Finally, once I have all of this, I can set my text. Set text result. And then what am I setting it to my result? Is it run? And it's not going to work yet. Year, search, it all lists here. Why didn't that run? I never asked it to. Print results is never asked to run. I run search list here. Well, after I run that search list, I'm going to ask this function, right? Because once it runs search list, once this function gets run, it returns or it just goes back. Zoop, it hits the bottom here and it goes back and runs any code beneath it. So after it, I want to run print list or print results, print results. I'm going to speed through me fixing two errors. I had an S at the end of results and tiles output on 33 is missing a T. Make sure your variable names are identical wherever you use them. All right, let's keep going. Two small errors, of course. And boom, there they are. So these are all those films filtered. So let's double check our requirements. At least three screens. We got that. A data set used in a meaningful way, we did that. At least one list transverse, we did. We listed, we uh, transversed our Netflix titles and years. Programming constructs, yep, we have variables, we have functions, we have conditionals, that's an if statement, we have lists, and we use two loops. All functions include comments, don't have that yet. All of our IDs make sense. Yeah, I named them all, that stuff that makes sense. So did you? No errors. Okay, let me go ahead and add those comments, and we are... Well, on our way. I will say, right now I am just doing filtering. There is so much you can do with this app. I am going to keep building onto it. So make sure to check out the next video if you want to keep going. Also make sure this app is your own. If you are writing down word for word or item for item what I am, you really do want to make this stuff reflect your ability, your code. So maybe some of my function names are bad. Maybe you want to use a string here instead of a list. Maybe instead of doing, like I said earlier, make this all up to you, right? Instead of doing a year drop down, maybe it makes more sense here since there's so many different years to do a text input. Maybe instead of having a search button, the second they make a change to their input, right? The second they do anything that changes that, you could do a, instead of a restart button, you could have year input, uh, year, year input if you had, or year drop down if you're using that on change. 
And the second they change it, you go ahead and auto search. You need to switch that back. Those are some ideas. You just want to make this reflect you and be your own. Let me go ahead though, print results. Uh, and we just want to explain what the function does. So loop through the list, convert to a string and output it to the screen. That works. Cool. And then up here, what's this do? This guy filters the titles list based on the year and adds the titles with the matching year to our output list. Okay, and that's comments above both of our functions. Also, I would design this a bit differently if I were you. Have fun with this, make it your own. Keep in mind all of this works with other data sets, right? Maybe you don't want to do Netflix, good, don't. Use uh, the Oscar winners, use Rolling Stone, use anything that you need. All of this filtering with a year would work with any date at all or any number, not necessarily date, any number. So Grammy winners, I have no idea. Let me preview this. Uh, oh, yep, they have years here. But you could also do it with the height of a mountain or whatever you want. Take a look at data sets, make this your own, make something awesome. Also, I throw an image on this page and we made it. Ta-da, be proud of your awesome work.